Alrighty, here we go. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this video, it means that you're probably trying to figure out what's going on. So, this is section 6.4. We're going to look at what we call the slope y-intercept form of a linear equation. Okay, now what you guys have done so far is you've been able to plot a point. So, if we look at, say, 2 and negative 3, hopefully we'll be able to plot that at 2 and negative 3 like this. Here we go. Now, if I gave you uh, a slope and said, okay, well, the slope is... Uh, three halves. Okay, well, hopefully you understand that that means uh, that is your delta y over your delta x, which means that you go up three and then over two, up three and over two, up three and over two. Hopefully you guys can follow the pattern back this way, and there you go. Uh, I went over one. Uh, well, that's not going to be done. It doesn't matter. So uh, here we are, and if I asked you to give me the equation of this line, well, hopefully some of you would have an idea. Maybe not. It's kind of hard. I guess that's what we're looking at right now, right? There was an exercise that we did in the class. We looked at two different things. We looked at the thing called the slope, and then we looked at where it crosses the y-axis, which is what we call our y-intercept, right? So the slope in this case is what we call three halves, and the y-intercept you can see is one, two, three, four, five, six. Is at negative six, okay? Now, hopefully... Um, these things are making sense to you. You have to understand which is the x-axis, which is the y-axis, how to identify a point, and how to get your slope, okay? Um, that being the case, uh, then you're on the right track, okay? So, uh, we can graph a line giving a, given a point in a slope. Now, the question would be, can you give me an equation, right? Anyways, so this here, right... This bad boy right here, y equals mx plus b, is one of the most important things that you're going to see in Math 10, okay? Because it translates into Math 11, Math 12, uh, calculus, any real branch of mathematics deals with linear equations. Even if you're talking about physics or chemistry, um, a lot of the relationships that you end up plotting in your labs deal with linear functions. So this thing is not going to go away, all right? The slope thing is what we've talked about already. Slope is this m value, and it's uh, described as delta y over delta x. We can also simplify that to simply saying rise over run. Rise being your change in y and your run being your change in x. Another way that we can write this down is the formula way, which is y2 over y1 minus x2 minus x1. And that I think we've seen as well because we've already been looking at slopes in detail. The other value here that you don't uh, necessarily haven't seen yet <coughs> excuse me, is the y-intercept. Now, the y-intercept is where x equals 0, and this is where I need to run off on a little bit of a tangent, okay? So, first of all, we know that vertical lines are not functions, right? But vertical lines, um, vertical lines like this, uh, have a very simple equation, right? If you look at this, um, this line happens at x equals 3. Well, what's the value of x here, or 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 here? So all along this line, you have x equaling 3. What you don't have is a y value specific, because y can be anything. So for vertical lines, okay, vertical lines, you have this thing. Um, they're always in the form x equals a number, because the x is constant all the way through. Okay, but these are not functions. Okay, vertical lines are not functions. The other thing I wanted to quickly show you was kind of a similar thing, but we're going horizontally now. So if I gave you a value, say right here, give you a horizontal line right there, hopefully you're going to be able to look at this and tell me something. And uh, you'll notice if I asked you about the x values, well, the x values change the whole way along this line. What doesn't change is the y value, and that y value is negative 2. So the equation of this line is y equals negative 2. So they're in the form y equals a number. And that's a really important point to grasp, and hopefully you'll get that pretty quick here. Okay. The other thing I wanted to remind you quickly of was the x-intercept right, uh, and the y-intercept. Okay. These are very important points. We brought them up already. The x-intercept is where y equals 0. Now look at what we just talked about, right? The x-intercept is somewhere along here where it crosses the x-axis. That's a horizontal line. A horizontal line where y is equal to 0. Boom, there you go.
Now, if we're looking for the y-intercept, interpect. Oh my God, that's a funny way, interpect. If you're looking for the y-interpect, it's where it crosses the y-axis. And if you can see the y-axis just keeps going up and down, uh, the y values change, but what remains constant is that fact that x is equal to zero. So when you want to find the x and y-intercept of an equation, so for example, if you're going to be given an equation y is equal to uh, 2x minus 4, right? If you're going to look for the y-intercept, well, first of all, you can see it's right there, but it's where x is equal to zero. So what you end up with, that goes away, you get y is equal to negative 4, right? Boom, that's done. You get negative 4. If you're looking for the x-intercept, right, you make y equal 0. So what happens? You go 0 equals 2x minus 4. And then we solve for x. We bring that over. 4 is equal to 2x, right, because we add 4. We add 4. Then we divide by 2, and you get x is equal to 2. So this is how we find our x and y intercepts. Okay, just a quick reminder again. Hopefully that helps. So um, let's see if we can write an equation given a line. That's one thing that we need to be able to do. So let's slide this over here. Maybe I'll zoom in for you. Uh, the zooming in seems to be working a little bit. Anyway, so if I gave you a line right here, uh, let me do this. There you go. If I gave you this line right here, would you be able to find the equation of that line? Well, what you do is you identify the slope and you identify that y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is pretty easy. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It crosses at 6. Your slope, up 1 over 1. Your slope is just 1 over 1. So when you want an equation, what you do is you plug those values in to your m, sorry, your m and your b. Okay, so it's going to be y is equal to 1x plus 6. And there is the equation of that line. Think about a little bit differently here. Let's try another one. Here's another line. You can identify your m pretty quick here as being down 1 over 2, so negative 1 half. Your b value, a little bit trickier to see, a little bit trickier to see, but hopefully you can see that it's actually 1 half because it's, I mean, it's pretty logical. So hopefully you can kind of see that if you go down 1 and 2, you go down a half and 1, which means that you're up a half right here, okay? And then we simply plug them in. y equals negative 1 half x plus one half. All right. That's how we find the equation of a line given that actual line. Okay. Now let's see, graph a line with equation in that form. All right. So let's have a look at this now. So if I gave you an equation in this form, okay, let's look at an example. Y is equal to uh, two thirds X minus four. Okay. Well, identify your M, which is two thirds identify your b which is negative 4 and we go from there so negative 4 is my y-intercept remember so i go down one two three four there's my y-intercept looking at a slope of two-thirds so we go up two over three up two over three up two over three we can go down two back three down two back three notice that i have it all the way across and there we go one mistake people make is that you find the point, but then they do the slope and they start here. They go up two over three, up two over three. Please understand that the y-intercept is on the line you're looking for. So that's where we measure the slope from. Let's try another one real quick here. How about if we have y is equal to negative uh, 2x plus 3? Okay, so identify your m, identify your b value. Your m is negative 2. If you want to put it over 1, that's fine. Your b is 3. So if we start at a b, we go up 3. That's the y-intercept. I have a slope of negative 2. So that means that I go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. And we keep going until we get all the way across the graph. All right? So we need to be able to write an equation like this. Write the equation if you have the line. Okay? You need to be able to graph the line, given the equations, and then we need to be able to solve some problems. Um, let's see if we can solve some problems. Um, applying this to actual situations. What type of relationships would be linear problems, right? Well, let's have a look. 
school dances. You've all been to a school dance. Maybe, maybe not. So if school puts on a dance, DJ costs 300 bucks and tickets are five bucks each. So what would be the cost of the dance, right? So if you want to write this in function notation, you can say that the cost of the dance, and what's it dependent on, right? It's dependent on how many tickets are sold. So cost of the dance is dependent on the number of tickets. What are we going to write down here? So, it can also be f of x if you want, but anyways, so we got $300 plus five bucks a ticket. Now, if you want to rearrange it in the order that we've got it before, right, it's mx plus b or 5t plus 300. Now, if you wanted to write it down using x's and function notation that's kind of generic, then you can do it like this as well. These are exactly the same equation. How you're going to graph that is a little bit trickier, but what we're trying to figure out right now is how to get from the problem to an equation. And now you can find out how much it costs to run the dance, right? Okay, so now, local gym charges 75 bucks registration, charges 75 bucks registration, and 15 bucks a month to use the gym. Okay, so you can do your registered gym uh, registration. Uh, depends on the monthly fee, or you can just do an f of x one again, or however you want to do it, right? So you know that it charges you 75 bucks straight off the bat, right? Now, it also costs me 15 bucks a month, so I'm going to go $15 times m, because that's what I used as my month. If you'd rather do it in function notation using f of x, well, it's $15 for every x, and if you were actually going to graph it right down here on the x-axis, you'd probably have months like this. And then x is 1. It costs you a certain amount. Of two months, another amount. Three months, another amount. Right? And you can see that it would be going up steadily. And what would happen, say, what would your y-intercept be? Well, your y-intercept would be where x is equal to 0. If x is 0, boom, that's right there. You'd be at 75 bucks, which means that that is your starting amount, right? Just the beginning of problems dealing with linear functions. Any questions? Try some of the questions out of the book. Ask me questions when you come to class. This is essentially what we're looking at today. And if you don't have the, the numbers to do out of the book, that's what I've asked you to do. All right. See you.